astronomy. Astronomy is a natural science. If you're taking notes, astronomy is a natural science that is the study of celestial objects. Astronomy is a natural science that is the study of celestial objects. When we say celestial objects, we're talking about moons, planets, uh, stars, nebulae, galaxies, the four expanse of the universe. Astronomy is the study of those. It's a natural science that's the study of them. And the study of them includes the physics of, that is, what, what they're made up of, um, their, their components. It covers their chemistry. The physics is actually uh, the math that causes, that governs those bodies. And chemistry is what the bodies themselves are made out of. Their evolution, what happens to them from the time they are created until the time they are um, no longer. And the movement of them also is a part of astronomy. It's a natural science. So in natural science, you're going to look at the stellar heavens, and you'll be able to see that there's planets out there, there's stars, there's moons, there's nebulae, there's uh, galaxies, there's a far expanse of the universe, and you see that they move and that certain things happen with them. They're made up of certain stuff. They evolve from a beginning to an end. That's the study of astronomy, and it should be undertaken. Because God, uh, according to Psalms 19, is where I want to begin with you this morning. In Psalms 19, God placed them out there. And he doesn't do anything superfluously. He doesn't do anything unnecessarily. Psalms 19, verse number 1 declares, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. The heavens do what? They declare the glory of God. The heavens declare. So the heavens is saying something to us. Please note this. That God speaks through a number of avenues, and one of the avenues through which he speaks is the heavens. The heavens is declaring something. And it says what it declares is the glory of God. The word glory there is the, the essence of the true nature of a thing. The heavens, God has couched within the heavens the ability to express something about himself to humankind. We'll look at this a little bit closer in a moment, but let me make a comparison now from astronomy to astrology. Astrology, by definition, is a belief system. Astrology is a belief system which claims that human affairs are correlated with the positions of celestial bodies. It's a belief system which declares that Human affairs are correlated with the position of celestial bodies. So when a celestial body is in a certain place, then humans on the earth are going to do a certain thing. This is a belief system. So astrology is actually a religion. In, in the sense that people have bought into the system to believe that the stellar heavens actually manage the behavior of people on earth. Well, if that is the case, then it, it totally eliminates free will. And we are a sophisticated automaton. We're a sophisticated robot that is actually uh, consciously or unconsciously moved by the stellar arrangements. And you guys remember, you know, don't, don't look at me too cool because you remember back in the 60s and 70s when everybody was asking everybody, what's your... Yeah, what's your sign? Yeah, that, 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 was, that was a part of the whole rap game. You know, that was, if a man was going to make his way to a woman in a, in a situation and he liked her, and he, one of his early questions would be, what's your sign? 
Now, I know you guys in the, in, in the 2000s, you know, that sounds so antiquated to you, and it actually is silly. But it wasn't silly when, when it was being used. I mean, it was, there was serious business about it. And so you have these signs of the Zodiac, 12 signs of the Zodiac that, uh, that are divided into 12 sections of the year. And these, uh, the explanation for these signs are supposed to give you some insight on t- and into what is going to happen with you during that day or that time period. Aries, 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 Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, uh, Leo, Virgo, uh, Libra, um, Scorpion, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces. Well, we're going to get to that one. (laughs) All of these are, are stellar arrangements. I want to examine them with you a moment because let me just tell you something. Wherever there has been a perversion... There is a true. Wherever things have been twisted, where the enemy has taken something and made a mockery out of truth, there is a truth that undergirds it. There's a truth that should be followed in regard to it. So Aries, the symbol for Aries is the ram. And the Bible says in Psalms that the heavens don't declare the zodiac's purpose. It says that the heavens declare the glory of God. So where in the theme of God has a ram been used? See, we just, because it's witchcraft, and it is witchcraft, we throw all of those things completely out the window And forget that witchcraft and anything the devil does, he's not a creator, he's a twister, he's a perverter. So we we don't look at the nature of what God is saying through that. Because Sagittarius or Capricorn or Aquarius or Pisces or all that rest of didn't start with the devil. He named it all of those weird names. But the symbols themselves. Like the ram that is Aries uh, comes, uh, you know, so it's, it has to do with, biblically, it has to do with, when I think of a ram, the first place I go is to Abraham. And I remember that God would make himself a sacrifice. And as a ram caught in a thicket, and a sacrifice would be made, and redemption would take place through that symbol in the stars, I'm reminded when I see the ram that God made himself a sacrifice. If I see Taurus, the bull, I remember that on the altar of sacrifice, a bullock was laid. And the high priest would place his hand on the head of that animal and there would be a transference of the condemnation of sin upon the animal and the animal would die. So when I look up into the sky and I see Taurus the bull, it doesn't remind me of some, some uh, occultic symbol. It reminds me that God has made himself a sacrifice for my sins. My sins are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. I remember the strong bulls of Bashan that surrounded Jesus on the cross. They were not actual animals. He was talking about the political structures that put pressure on him. So when I see the bull, I remember that if I walk in the midst of political stru- uh, pressure, it's only because I'm walking in the pathway of Jesus. I'm following his footsteps. And the pressure is going to come, but let it come. Because Jesus said, I have fear not because I have overcome the world. Amen. Trying to redeem some of this stuff in your mind now trying to redeem some of these, these, uh, these practices that maybe you have gotten into as, as far as reading your horoscope is concerned. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 
See, when you, when you dip your mind into astrology, this study that believes that these arrangements affect your behavior, and, and many people are compelled to do it because they want to know the future. So they will condemn it vocally and yet go read, read it in the paper. They'll condemn it, but they'll still make the tip their way over to Cool and Dada's house. And no, do some smoke and egg and all that kind of stuff. Smoke, egg, and feather. Just don't tell nobody. Just don't tell nobody. Because I just want to know, you know, I just want to know. Or get a tarot card reading. See, all of that is occultic stuff, but it, what, it, what it's answering to is a person's desire to want to know what's in the future. Read the book, read the book. Read the book Kathy said. Read the book. So Aries reminds me, the ram has been slain. It was caught in a thicket. It was the covenant animal. God entered into a covenant with Abraham as he as he didn't uh, slay his son Isaac, God gave him a preceding word. Taurus the bull, uh, Gemini the twins, everything that happens in the, there are many twins in the Bible. The first of them, perhaps, based on the, the, the writing of the language of Hebrew, is Cain and Abel. Because the scripture says she's conceived once, but she bore twice. If you conceive one time, you bear two times. The first set of twins is perhaps Cain and Abel but we see that there are significant uh, twins that set the course so when I see Gemini I remember I have a choice I can go the way of Cain the way of destruction or I can go the way of Abel whose offering was received by faith stellar heavens are telling me that And you go through the symbols and you look at the symbols and see what it reminds you about God, not about some occultic practice. Because the stars ain't going nowhere. The the arrangements are still there. But what does it speak to you? Let it, according to uh, Psalms 19, let it declare the glory of God. So, One of them, of course, is Virgo. Virgo is the virgin. Before the virgin, there is Leo. Leo is the symbol of a lion. When I look up into heaven, I don't think about something. I don't even know what Leo means in that astrological world, but I do know what it means when I look up in in, in the stellar heavens and I see arrangement of a lion in the heavens. It reminds me that Jesus Christ himself is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Our minds have become so tainted that we can't even look at things that once entangled us and see God in it for the noise, the clutter that's in our mind over all of that wickedness. But because I never got into the signs thing, for me to look at stellar arrangements and to see those is not an affliction for me because I, 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 never, I never got into the other side of it. So it's, I'm not tripped up by it. If you are, don't traffic here. Because I don't want you, you know, going out and getting the paper to read what your, uh, your horoscope, your horrible scope is for the day. One of the signs after Leo, the lion, is Virgo, the virgin. Now, something's going to happen with that sign. Of course, the virgin is the virgin. Uh, what we should be thinking about redemptively is the virgin Mary. God chose her out, right? Yes. Blessed are thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. All the Catholics said... We'll have an altar call at the end of service. <laughs> See, we can't root that. Anyway, 
Okay. But from the vantage point of Israel, I've given you uh, several things, and I'm just, I'll just come right to this one right now uh, as I get the line down. The first thing that we looked at was the Comet Ison, and it, uh, it came into view on the 28th of November. That was the first day of Hanukkah. And remember, it has only been seven times in the last 2,000 years that all of these uh, astrological signs, uh, or they're not astrological, the astronomical signs have happened in agreement with God's feast days. Only seven times in the last 2,000 years. Only three times in the last 500 years has there been an alignment between what is happening in the heavens and God's feast days. If you live another hundred years, you won't witness what is happening in the stellar heavens right now again. Probably you or your children will not see this again. There's going to be seven more times in this century when there will be tetrads or four blood moons. But they will not be lining up with the feast days. The only time in the next 100 years when these will be lining up with the feast days are the ones that we're entering into now. The first was 28th of November. That was Ison, and we told you that that had to do with uh, the coming of the great light because 28th of November is on Hanukkah. So it announces the coming of a great light, and, and it correlates to the temple, menorah, where there is light in the holy place, and it gives not the holiest of all, but there's light there too, but in light the holiest of all is as the Shekinah, or the glory of God. But in the holy place, there is the light of the menorah, and it's one, we went through all of that with you. To, and it casts light on the table of showbread. And it casts light on the altar of incense. The next phenomenon that we looked at were the four blood moons. The first of which is next month. I'm not talking about years from now. I'm talking about next month. April 15th will be the first blood moon. And I explained to you what a blood moon is. In five different passages in scripture, Jesus says before he comes, these phenomenon are going to be in the sky. Jesus said before the great and terrible day of the Lord come, these things will be happening in heaven. So when you see them happening, look up because I'm trying to tell you, I'm shouting from heaven, something is about to happen. And it's next month. The first of the four blood moons will be April the 14th. Uh, April the 15th. You remember that on the Jewish day, the day starts at sundown. So it will start actually sundown the 14th till sundown the 15th will be the first day. And we will see the blood moon, uh, the first of the four within that time frame. And, and the scriptures keeps reminding us that God says before he comes, the sun will become as sackcloth and the moon will become as blood. Before he returns... So the signals that are happening in the sky are signaling his. You you don't believe what you just said. Because if we grasp and held on to what we actually just spoke with our mouths, that the signs in the heavens are actually telling me about his coming. Let me tell you something. That when I finish this series and, and I'll finish it today. The next series of messages that I'm going to be ministering is on the cross of Jesus Christ. Now, now here's, here's why. Because it's the cross that saves people. It's the cross that prepares Jesus, prepare people for Jesus' is coming. He is coming. Somebody say, he is coming. And everything is telling us he's coming. So it's Ison, and then it was the first blood moon on the 14th, and then we have... The next blood moon, which will be um, on o October the 8th. This will be the first night of our Celebrating the Harvest conference this year. Because we celebrate around feast days. Because we want to be in timing with God. So the second blood moon will occur on the 8th of October. And then there will be a full solar eclipse on the 20th of March, 2015. On the 20th of March, 2015, a full solar eclipse. 
that 20th of March, as I said, doesn't mean anything to you on a Gregorian calendar. But if you looked on the Hebrew calendar, you would find that the 20th of March is the first of Nisan. It is the beginning of the ceremonial calendar. It is the beginning of the feast days. When God said to them that this will be the first, of, uh, first month of the, of the year to you. It's also called a sign of the Gentiles. As some of the rabbis consider that the first of Nisan is a sign of the Gentiles. Uh, could, could, could God do something so significantly in the Gentile church that it will be a sign to the Jews? Like, anyway. Do I, do I go here with you? How many of you still believe in the rapture? Let me see your hands. You believe the rapture of the church. You believe, do you, you believe the rapture? Okay, now, that means that the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ is going to rise first. And then those of us who are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. You believe in the rapture. You believe that, you're, that God is calling the church out. I believe, I absolutely believe because I'd have to destroy a whole lot of the Bible not to believe it. But if I believe in the rapture and I know that on, on a, a one of these signs, in fact, there's a couple of them. It probably is not this one, but the notion is there. That because this sign is a, something God doing some, something so significant in the Gentile church that it begins to wake up the nation of Israel and cause them to be able to see what they haven't seen before. And just let me tell you this also. What's different about this tetrad, these four blood moons, as opposed to any other set of four blood moons in the past is namely this, that there is now the nation of Israel has been reassembled since, 19, since UN Resolution 181 in 1947, that is of kind of the official birthday. But they declared their independence on May 14, 1948. Now, when there had been tetrads in the past, all of the, the signs could not have been pointing to the, to the end of time as we know it because Israel had not come back yet. And we're still missing an essential piece as far as Revelation is concerned. Not only Israel being a nation again, but the construction of the third temple. The third temple must now be in place and we could have an arrangement. We could have an arrangement from the United Nations that would make that a possibility as early as April 29th, last, April 29th this year. That's next month. That in the peace arrangement, there could be enough of a peace arrangement to try to appease Israel for taking all of its land. Right now, it is living on land about the size of the state of New Jersey. The nation of Israel is about the size of the state of New Jersey. And all of its enemies around it is larger and more massive than it is. And all of them are threatening to destroy the nation of Israel. They won't be able to do it because God the Father is he that keepeth Israel, neither slumbers nor seeds. And, and he's promised and he's going to fulfill his promise to his people. If God breaks his promise to the nation of Israel, why would you not believe that God could also break his promise to the Gentile church? God is a covenant-keeping God, and he's going to keep his covenant with the people of Israel. So if this agreement next month that John Kerry, listen to me, our Secretary of State, I'm not talking to you about ancient stuff. John Kerry is our sitting, uh, our present sitting Secretary of State, and he's been assigned to hammer out an agreement between the Palestinians and the Israelis. And perhaps a part of that agreement would be because they're making so many large concessions moving out of the West Bank and all this kind of stuff. Many of the Israelis said we're not moving out of the West Bank. We'll be here as well as there are Palestinians in the city of Jerusalem. Israel proper will be here. If the concession is I didn't talk this through with you last week, so I need to go here with you because of where we need to end up today. If the concession is that you get to construct your third temple, the Jerusalem project, by the way, is 
is responsible for getting everything in order so that when the temple is constructed, it can be used. I want you to know the Jerusalem project has, has finished. Amen. Every altar is made. Are you listening to me? The, the brazen altar is there. The labor of incense is there. The, the table of showbread, the menorah, the, uh, the altar of incense, the Ark of the Covenant, all of its attending bowls and snuffers and pieces, everything that the way God described them to do it has been reconstructed by the Jerusalem Project. The only thing they're waiting on is the temple. Let's say that the temple will go up on the, uh, according to UN, they'll go up at, on a, 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 with a shared arrangement up on the Temple Mount because the Jews cannot have it any other place. So it'll be on the Temple Mount right next to the Alaska Mosque and the Dome of the Rock. So now what would this do? This would have caused the world to see, oh, look, we are solving the religious problem. The Jews and the Muslims are worshiping right next to each other. Who hammered out this wonderful peace accord? So, so when they begin to say, peace, peace, are you listening? I'm not talking to you about the distant future. I'm talking to you about next month. So they, so they give them the reason to build, and the Jews would, would aggressively begin to build the temple uh, on the Temple Mount. And once the temple is up, they begin their animal sacrifices again. <coughs> now, th think with me here for a little bit. They begin animal sacrifices. What do you think the ASPCA is going to say about that? <laughs> what do you think Peter's going to say about that? These, we're living in an environment right now where animals are treated with more importance than human beings. And you think about the, 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 uh, the requirement of slaying these animals. And now we have television where it can be seen that they're being slain. The sentiment of the world will turn drastically and quickly against the nation of Israel. And against anyone who stands with them. And so now this man of sin, the son of perdition, he has to solve this problem. Some have said, uh, some have postulated that this would be the outworking of that. And, and we don't know. We ju we, we, we're just kind of thinking through the process. But the man of sin would have to do a couple of things. He would have to stop the animal sacrifice in such a way that it pleases the, the pet-loving world and there's nothing wrong with loving pets. God's, you know, God says a good man is good to, even to his animals. But when your animal takes more precedence over human life, then now we have a problem. So, so these commercials will come on, ASPCA commercials, and dogs are really sad, and the sad music is playing, and, you know, feed, feed the dog because, you know, the dog needs your help, and the little kitty is mad at eyes, and, You know, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not kicking it as, as per se, because animals do need help. But when I will do that and ignore 55 million dead human beings through abortion, where is the sad song for them? Where is the call to the heart of the public to stop that? There's an imbalance there. There's an imbalance. So, so when this begins to happen, this is the world we're living in. When that kind of life is embraced, this man of sin will have a problem. He will have to stop the blood sacrifices. And what he's going to do, some postulate what he will do, is go as far as to say to Israel, the reason you don't need animal sacrifices anymore is because I am your Savior. And the scripture says he will do it standing in the holy place. Amen. 
Many of Israel will rend their clothes, but it will start a time of persecution against those who will cry blasphemy that has never been seen before. There is another coming Jewish holocaust. So, be on the alert, Faith Outreach Center, and be on the alert every, every place this goes. When that peace arrangement comes forward next month, be on the alert as to whether or not it has, as a part of it, a UN agreement, a UN uh, controlled temple mount, a United Nations controlled temple mount, and whether or not the Jewish people will be allowed to construct the third temple. Now, if you think I'm, if you think I'm shooting into the dark here, I did uh, uh, some marriage counseling. By the way, I'm doing a lot of marriage counseling, and I'm so glad that you guys are deciding to marry. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Hey, man, this is good stuff. Yes. Better to marry than to burn, somebody said. Uh, where was I going with that? <laughs> oh, yes. I had a little middle-aged moment there, forgive me. <laughs> I had to grab that one back, Kathy. I had to go, I had to go chase that one down. It took me a little while. In the counseling, I was saying this to what I'm saying to you because we were talking about the sermons, and, and she said, the, the lady in the counseling, she said, I was listening to NPR radio, National Public Radio, on the way in, and she said one of the people came in talking about the building of the third temple in Jerusalem. She said it was his spot on NPR where he was talking about the arrangements are now being made for the construction of the third temple in Jerusalem. On national public radio. I said, do you realize how significant what you just heard was? What am I saying to you? I'm saying... The reason that God is shouting from heaven is because he's about to do something profound on the earth and he wants your sons and your daughters saved. He wants your aunts and your uncles in the house, in the ark of safety. So the next series that I'm preaching is actually working together with your evangelical uh, bend. As you get them in here, I'm going to preach the cross, the cross, the cross. The cross to give them an opportunity to come and know Jesus Christ. These series of messages is literally to remind you that the one who died on the cross is coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. And it may be that he will come in my lifetime and in your lifetime. Do you understand that if we see the construction of the third temple, that that hasn't been seen since 70 A.D.? It hasn't happened since 70 A.D., and we're now in the 21st century. 20 centuries have passed. And the likelihood is that you will hear in a few months that the arrangements for the construction of the third temple are now in place. By the way, the plans not only the instruments, but the plans of the temple itself, how it will be constructed, has already been made. The only thing that they're waiting on is the place to do it and the word that says go. They definitely will go for it. Her question was, will the Jews go for it right next to the Alaska Mosque? Why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they put the temple of God on their holy site and begin to offer to God again because they would believe that in so doing it would overshadow everything else and they have somewhat of a right to believe that. 
So you'll be listening next month because National Public Radio is already talking about the construction of a third temple in Jerusalem. So now, what other, what other sign do we have? I want to look at, look at you with this last sign uh, that we're going to look at today. After the four blood moons, and this, is, this fourth blood moon will be the Feast of Tabernacles in 2015. That will be on uh, the 13th. I'm sorry, it'll be on the 28th of September. So uh, these are on, the, on, our, on our website, but I'll just trace them with you. So the 28th of November was, was, was what? Isam. And what, and what feast day was it? Hanukkah. The 15th of April is the first blood moon, and that's what? Passover. And the second blood moon is going to be the 8th of October. That's what? Sukkot. Uh, then there will be a, a solar eclipse, a complete solar eclipse on March 20th. What is that? The first of Nisan. Some said that might, that might be the rapture. Some said that might be the, the rapture of the church. I, uh, will it be? I don't know. I don't know. And I'm not postulating to you that I know. But what I am saying is that we're living in prophetic times. Personally, I lean more toward a feast of trumpets as a time of the, res of the rapture. Because John said in Revelation 4, I heard a voice as it were, a trumpet talking with me, and it said, come up hither. <laughs> so I'm more given to the Feast of Trumpets. But he's God. So then we have the solar eclipse on first and his sun. We have our third blood moon, uh, the 4th of April, 2015. That is Passover. Then we have a partial solar eclipse. I was telling you about that last week on the 13th of September. That's Elul 29 or Tishri 1. And I said to you that that date actually is the anniversary of the last economic downturn that we took as a nation. The seventh anniversary. Seven years ago, or it will have been seven years ago on, on Elul 29. We had a crash. Seven years prior to that, we had a crash. You are living in prophetic times. The reason that we're urging you toward God's financial system is because it's within the context of that system you get supernatural provision. Obviously, the house gets stuff done. Obviously, the gospel is preached and we get to do orphanages and dig wells and all that kind of stuff. But there is a provision that God has given you as his people to step inside of it protection-wise. I, I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't tell you what I've told you. Tithes, offerings, first fruits, give it to God. Amen. By the way, those of you who give your first fruits gift, that little $500 thing that I was just telling you about a minute ago, for you, there's not only, uh, for you, your Seder tickets are paid within that. For every person who gives their $553 gift, your Seder tickets, one, one adult ticket, one, uh, no, two adult tickets, and we were talking about a family of five going free. Is that right? Yes. A family of five going free for those who are um, first fruits givers. We want you in, we want you in Passover Seder. And you, this is a way for you to kill two birds with one stone, if you will. Just give your first fruits offering. And included in your first fruits offering is your tickets to the Seder. And bring your children. Because the children have to understand that what we're celebrating is God's hand of deliverance for the nation of Israel and to bring them out of captivity and to give them the inheritance that he promised them. Okay, so we got that partial thing happening, partial solar eclipse on the 13th of September. And then we have the final fourth blood moon, which is a super moon on the 28th of September 2015. 
And then this last symbol is the, the sign, of the, the constellation Virgo, the 23rd of September, 2017. From the vantage point of Israel, if you're in Israel, you will see the, the constellation Virgo arise and it will fulfill prophetic scripture. Something's going to happen with the, the, com, the uh, planet Jupiter and the constellation Virgo. Jupiter is called the king planet. It's called the king planet because it's the largest of the ones in our solar system. But it has always been associated with the king, Jesus. But I, and I say that because of what's going to happen. This is not... This is not Christian saying this. This is NASA saying this. That from the vantage point of Israel, Virgo will arise in the sky and the rotation of Jupiter will cause Jupiter, the king planet, to enter into the womb of the constellation Virgo. And because of its retrograde action, it will stay in Virgo for 41 weeks. 41 weeks is the normal gestation time of a pregnancy. And then the, 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 the planet Jupiter will exit the womb of Virgo. The king is coming. The king is coming. The heavens are declaring the glory of God. Now why am I telling you this? Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready for his coming. Uh, also in 2017, I'll just list these things for you because uh, in 2017 is the 50th anniversary of the city of Jerusalem being under the rulership of Israel. The 50th anniversary. 50 is the Jubilee year. It's, all of this stuff happening at once, can it, it can't be coincidental. Jerusalem is coming in, in, in uh, sep September of 2017. Jerusalem is coming into its 50th year. Let me, let me throw one more at you. 2017 is 500 years from 1517. In 1517, Martin Luther nailed his 95 thesis on the wall of the church in Gutenberg, Germany. And Protestantism began, not because he wanted it to begin, he was really trying to call the church to a place of reconciliation. But 2017, when we see Israel's 50th year jubilee, we also see the 500th year of Protestantism. 5017 was also the time when the Turks uh, uh, took Jerusalem. And Rabbi uh, Judah ben Samuel, said that from that time, he prophesied that from that time when the Turks took Jerusalem, that we would see uh, 10 jubilees before the Messianic age. How long is a jubilee? Years. Uh, how many is 10 jubilee? 500 years. He prophesied we see 10 jubilees before the coming of the Messianic age. Now, here's, here's the reality. You could not make it home. God forbid. 
But something could happen where you can't make it home. Today is the day of salvation. In that you, when you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Answer the Lord's call today. Because he is returning. And everything is saying that he is. What's happening in the nation of Israel, what is happening in the world, what is happening in the church. Now here's what, I believe there's still some pieces missing. And one of them is a wide sweeping Holy Ghost revival that will enrapture the Western church. Just as it much, just much as it has the African church and some of the churches in the other continents. I believe that God has scheduled an outpouring of his spirit on the church in America. She'll rise up and she'll be hated simultaneously. We're already seeing the hate side of it. You'll be hated of all men for my name's sake, Jesus said. Stand on your feet with me, please. The reason that I've spoken to you about these wonders is because you have to understand the prophetic hour in which you are living. NASA couldn't put this together, y'all. They could not arrange these things happening on these dates and times. That the king planet will go into the womb of the constellation Virgo and remain there in retrograde motion for 41 weeks. The normal gestation period of a woman's pregnancy. And be issued out 500 years after the Turks took Israel. The same year. Five hundred years of Protestantism. Whew. Your heart ought to be saying, God, make me ready. Help me to be serious about what you're doing in the earth. And then help me become so irrefutably evangelistic that everybody that I know has a clear shot at the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I want to help you with it. That's why two Sundays from now, and the next Sunday is New Things Sunday, and after that, the missions team will be back, and they'll, they'll take their full service on Mission Sunday morning. But then the second Sunday in April, I'll begin a series on the cross. I don't care what you have to do. Get your family in this house for that message series on the cross of Christ so that they can see him in bold relief and the Holy Spirit's job will be to bring them to salvation. Well, somebody says, uh, what if all that stuff doesn't happen? Well, it's not something that you can fudge. I mean, it's You can't stop a blood moon. You can't fake one. <laughs> so things will become significantly speeded up on April 14th and 15th. By the way, our business meeting for the church is on April 16th. And Seder is on April 18th. Listen, we're not playing around here. We want to get as close to the timing of God and walk with him in the fullness as near as we can to it as we're being led by the spirit and we don't want any of you left out of it plug in to see what God is doing and saying in my heart I just I have, a, I have a compulsion to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes now it's not my normal way of doing things but because I believe that Jesus died openly Billy Graham says when he died, he died openly for us. 
And when we come to him, we ought to die. We ought to die openly. Die to ourselves openly. But but I know that sometimes the tenderness of the Holy Spirit is doing such a work in your hearts that it requires a a closet moment. Jesus said, when you pray, enter into your closet. He was talking about taking the tallit and putting it over your head and, and folding it around so that just in that tent is just you and God. But this is what's symbolized by the bowing of your head right now. You're just between you and God. I want to say to you that if in that place in your heart you are not fully convinced that you belong to him, you can be fully convinced. But not by an exercise of your own mind. It's by the work of the Holy Spirit. So if you're lost this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, or if you this morning are a backslidden believer, you, you had a relationship with God, but you've been living like you didn't have one. Or thirdly, you need a church home. You need to plug in where you can grow in the grace and an admonition and the fear of the Lord and begin to walk with God. Listen, let me just tell you something. I understand and I'm fully aware of the fact that, that there's great frailty in the human flesh. I understand it more vastly than I can explain it to you. More vastly than you could take an explanation. But I also know that greater is the grace of God. He's greater than all of my sin. He's bigger than all of my faults. He's bigger, he's bigger, he's bigger. His love is bigger. His grace over, overshadows. His grace surrounds. And to you this morning, that canopy of God's love and grace is extended if you don't know him in the free pardon of your sin or if you have backslidden and walked away from him or if you need a church family I'm going to ask you to step out into the aisles and come down front right now while the Holy Spirit is dealing with your heart it's a short window it's a very short window I'm not keeping it open long at all because the assistance of the Spirit of God upon my heart are you guys brothers? You look familiar. Especially you. I think I saw your face in the post office. <laughs> I didn't see you in the post office. <laughs> Joe. God's at work. Anybody else? Anybody else this morning? I just, I need to be connected to a church family. I, I need to re rekindle my relationship with God. Or, or I need a Savior. I need a Savior. I need to be saved. May you never look at astrology and all of that occultic foolishness the same again. That stuff has shielded you away from the revelation of who God is. The lion in the stars is not Leo, it's the lion of the tribe of Judah. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. He is coming. And he's sending every signal to let us know that. Hallelujah. Jeff, you and your wife are going to saddle up with us? Praise God. <laughs> Praise the Lord for that. And how about you? You need Jesus? You need a Savior? You do? Let me have your hands.
God wants to save you. He wants to save you. I'm going to ask you to join this guy's hands. What's your name? Andres. Andres, grab your brother's hand and grab her hand. Now the three of you are coming that Christ can save your life. And it's not complicated. The process is not complicated. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, he will save you. It is that simple. How do I know when I'm saved? New stuff happens on the inside. In the inside, you become more heavenly minded than you are earthly minded. You become more conscious of God than you are of yourself or your situations. So I want the three of you to just pray this prayer after me. Say, Father God, I am a sinner. I can't save myself. But you are coming back. Everything says you are. So I give you my heart and I give you my life right now. I'm yours, Jesus. I confess you are Lord of all. And I believe in my heart. God raised you from the dead. You're alive. Come live in me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Of course, shout people of God for the glory of God. Now, listen. A lot of people like for you to, a lot of pastors, because they, they got ego issues, so they like for you to come down front and do this thing, and then they're happy and all that, which is cool. But if you don't get a good start, if you don't get grounded in what you just did, you'll find yourself slipping back. So that man right over there is going to help you get a good start. So if you'll take, take them in that direction. Jeff and uh, what's your wife's name again? Dawn, yeah, Dawn. I see, I see the spelling D A U N E. <laughs> I'm grateful to the Lord that He's there in the neighborhood, y'all. By the way, we live on live on Gettysburg, is that right? McNeil, just right around the corner. Live on McNeil. So uh, we're gonna get to know each other real well. Thank you for your service to the house of God. And uh, Pastor Anthony, back there too with you, who will just give you a good start on how to roll into the family. Give them a big God bless you as they go. Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands. Let me speak the blessing of God over you. Jesus, that's still worship in the house. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. And may his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you shalom, peace to you, nothing missing in your life and nothing broken. And may the glory of God rest on you. Maybe you become evangelistic in your mouth and through your life. And may soul after soul come to know Jesus Christ as we partner together for the purposes of the advancement of the kingdom of God. And now may him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his throne in glory to the only wise God our Savior the glory and majesty and power and dominion both now and forever and the people of God said amen hallelujah you're dismissed go in the grace of God